Welcome to the Bloomberg New Economy Forum. Governments around the world are mobilizing trillions of dollars to address the economic effects of the pandemic. It's an unprecedented opportunity, not only to repair the damage, but also to address the problems that existed before the pandemic hit. The power of China today is a fact, and it's a perfectly justifiable fact in the sense of it's a large population country, ancient civilization, huge economy. Um, China is, is and should be one of the great powers of the world for the 21st century. The same urge that brings people together in an urban restaurant rather than, you know, eating at home. Um, it's, a, it's a question of balance, and I think you can only go so far with the work at home environment. In the end of the day, after COVID, uh, we humans still crave to be with other humans. Uh, new ideas and new new concepts can only come not when we're alone, when we are together. So as we think about the new world, and it is a new world that we are already in, working together, private and public sector is key. Otherwise, we're gonna go in a very bumpy, down a very bumpy road. I still believe that 2021 is going to be a, a difficult, uh, certainly first half of the year, and that we will not have caught up with where we were pre-pandemic uh, before the end of the year. This has to be a decade of supercharged innovation. And by innovation, I mean all the way through the deployment. I think people are waking up to the fact that uh, the coal age is ending uh, very quickly and it's being enabled by the incredible reduction in the cost of renewable energy uh, that we've seen over the past decade or so. We will not finance any coal-based power plants nor any projects which are functionally related to coal. Viruses don't need passports, they don't need visas, they can move easily without any detection, so we always have to be ready. This is the Sputnik moment of our generation, right? And in the same way that Sputnik inspired a space age, so too might this pandemic inspire a health age. One of the issues is to bring women's leadership at the center as well of the post-COVID, of the reconstruction, and the reshaping of what our continent is going to look like in future. You know, the bad news is the next six months in the Northern Hemisphere will be very tough. The good news is that both the vaccines and the therapeutics, in particular the antibodies, are coming along and will start to bring that number way down. The pandemic has taken so much from us, but it has also given us something, the opportunity to think afresh about the world we want. We are all in this together. Poor countries need help. They need grants. They need concessional lending. At the fund, we have stepped up, and I expect to get a mandate to continue to do more for those that need help the most. My bias towards innovation and combining the government and, and private sector together, that's been deeply reinforced by this tragic pandemic. We're not just in this alone, and I don't think companies should just worry about their own p and I think they have an obligation to help their city and their country and their neighborhood. And one of the ways to really do that is to get the big cities back and going again, because without that, we don't have a civilization and we don't have an economy.